It's great to be in the SEC right here on the SEC Recap Podcast. It's bowl season and today I've got the sweetest one of all. It's the Sugar Bowl. Alabama Crimson Tide, Kansas State Wildcats. I'm going to give you the full preview, breakdown, and score prediction right here on the SEC Recap Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the SEC Recap Podcast. I am your host, Ben Warren. If you're joining me in audio form on Google, Apple, Spotify, or any other podcast platform, don't hit pause, don't hit stop. Leave a rating and review. It helps me out a ton. It's free, and it takes about 15 to 20 seconds of your time. It's the best way that you can support the show at no cost to you. And if you're back with me on YouTube, Thank you so much for being here again. You might see uh, the setting I'm in is a little bit different. I'm actually in the same space. Just got some new stuff, and I've been having to rearrange my studio office space um, to accommodate all the new toys that I got for Christmas. Um, and unfortunately, this might be the last bowl game preview that I'm able to do. We got all these games coming up this weekend in just a couple days, and I've still got four left unfinished the music city bowl the rely quest bowl the citrus bowl and the peach bowl all episodes that i really 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 want to get to but at this pace i'm just not going to be able to get them out until like an hour before kickoff so unfortunately i feel i've run out of time this might be the last full one however i still might be able to do just statistical matchups and breakdowns and put those out as thumbnail videos here on youtube and of course uh possibly available in audio form so be on the lookout for those i'm not 100 percent guaranteeing that at this point in time um i've just run out of time this holiday season with the travel and the weather it was slow going slow coming back um, I worked a little bit over my Christmas break, but it was just hard to get it all in. Guys, no more waste of time. For those of you who are here, if you're an Alabama fan, you're a Kansas State fan, you're not here to hear me talk about all of that. You're here to hear me talk about your team, the Sugar Bowl. We have number five, Alabama Crimson Tide, taking on the number nine, Kansas State Wildcats in the Sugar Bowl. This game is December 31st at Noon, that's noon Eastern time in New Orleans, Louisiana. Real quick, want to preface before we get into the stats. You know, I made a bunch of videos, a bunch of shorts, YouTube shorts, three weeks ago, right when the CFP rankings came out um, and the bowl games were announced. And I wanted to do quick reactions. I called them way too early predictions, uh, my way too early bowl predictions. And I did one for every game, and it was just sort of what I thought. There was no injury information at the time. There was no opt-out information. Uh, there was no transfer portal information. None of that had come out yet. I still get people commenting on those videos uh, after all this information has come out. Like, what? You know, how are you going to talk about this, or how did you miss that? And I have to be like, man, I made that video three weeks ago. None of that information was available. Um, but it got a lot of activity on the Sugar Bowl one and uh, the, the Peach Bowl one as well. But want to talk about the Sugar Bowl one. So back when the talk, when this was first announced and all the talk was that, um, you know, Bryce Young probably not going to play. Will Anderson Jr. probably not going to play. Jameer Gibbs might opt out. All, all of these guys, right? The comment section was full. Very, very confident. Kansas State fans. You know, Kansas State's going to win by 14 points. We have, you know, one of the most efficient offenses in the country and defensively, like we're really underrated. Alabama's not going to be motivated. We're going to roll in there, you know, for Kansas State 41, Alabama 13, like we crazy, like super optimistic stuff like that. And look, I love that kind of thing. That's why we're here. That's why we do what we do. That's the kind of content that I love. I want to see your predictions. I want to hear why you think that. Then about 10, 11 days ago, Chris Lowe reported on Twitter, and I updated my comments under that YouTube video that Bryce Young, Will Anderson, all those guys were not opted out. They were opted very much in to the game. Uh, so Bryce Young in this game, Will Anderson Jr. in this game, uh, Jameer Gibbs in this game, those guys are playing, and all of a sudden, 
the comments from Kansas State fans got really quiet under that video, and Alabama fans who had been very quiet started chirping up, oh, this is a weak bowl. Alabama's going to slaughter Kansas State. It, it's just funny. I'm not, I'm not ragging, guys. I'm just having a good time here. But it's really funny how quiet Alabama fans were and how chirpy Kansas State fans were. And then all of a sudden that switched. Alabama fans got real chirpy and Kansas State fans got real quiet. Guys, I'm just having fun with you. I'm just I'm just uh I'm just poking at you. It's not serious. Don't uh don't come after me in the comments. It's just funny having a good time here. I really enjoyed it. All right, let's dive in and look at the statistical matchups. Okay. Alabama coming in with a very, very, very good offense. Number four in the country in terms of scoring offense, 40.8 points per game, 475 total yards per game. They have the number 23 passing attack, 278 yards, 32 patties on the year, and the number 16 rushing attack, 209 rushing yards a game, 21 Rushing tutties. They are minus two turnover margin. That's not good. And that's not what you expect from a Nick Saban Alabama team. It's not awful. Look, minus two turnover margin. You never want to be negative, but it's not like the worst thing in the world. Clearly, this offense still very good. Okay. Um, but regardless, it's maybe just a bit unexpected uh, for an Alabama team. Um, okay, Kansas State, number 31, res very respectable, very good offense in terms of scoring offense. 33.2 points per game on 420 total yards a game. Um, number 93 in the country in terms of passing offense by yards. 210 passing yards a game. It's, this is not good. Uh, and it's, it's a little out of, ba out of balance from what you might expect for a number 31 scoring offense okay but 210 passing yards a game 24 passing touchdowns good for 93 that's back third in the fbs it's not good it's really not impressive at all i know a lot of people right now are going to want to hit pause and scream at me in the comments about well if adrian martinez versus will howard look these are just by the numbers, okay? This is just the stats. This is not concerning individual personnel. I'm just reading to you what the numbers say. Um, 93 is not good. Could it have been better with, with Martinez versus uh, Will Howard? Yeah, sure, maybe. But we can't really debate that or flesh that out because we only have the data that we have. Um, so that's what we have to look at. Um, in terms of rushing attack, though, very, very good. Top 30, number 30 in the country, 197 rushing yards per game, 30 rushing touchdowns on the year. Um, so, you know, it's pretty clear here in terms of scoring offense, how the passing games match up. Alabama has the advantage in the passing game. Alabama has the advantage in the rushing game. That little minus two turnover margin, that is not enough to sway my opinion. I'm giving the statistical advantage here to the Alabama Crimson Tide. That shouldn't shock anyone. Let's take a peek at the defense. Um, Alabama, number nine in the country. So a top 10 scoring defense, pretty much where they've been all season. Uh, they had like the one outlier game against Tennessee, but you know, we saw how that game was going. That game just turned into a shootout, and we knew how that game was going to unfold. But other than that, they're holding opponents to an average of 18 points per game. Very, very good. Number 16 passing defense in the country, allowing just 186 yards, uh, 21 passing touchdowns. The number 32 rushing defense 125 rushing yards per game allowed to opponents 14 rushing tutties just a total of 311 yards given up per game kansas state no slouch number 20 in the country in scoring offense a very very good scoring offense 20.1 points per game that's excellent the number 53 
pass defense. That's middle of the road. So when dividing the FBS, I divide it into thirds. So anything that's in the top 43 is in the top third. And then uh, 86, you know, 44 to 86 would be middle third. And then 87 and back would be the back third. I color code that in these graphics. If you're listening to the podcast, just click the link to the article episode uh, to the episode article in the episode description, and you can browse these graphics with us. But I color code so green for top third, yellow for middle third, red for back third, just to kind of enhance the visual. Um, the number sixty four rushing defense. Okay, so also middle of the road, 148 rushing yards a game, giving up 14 rushing touchdowns, total of 365 yards yielded to opponents per game. Love this stat, though. Kansas State is one of the top two or three country teams in the country. Sorry, it's early in the morning, guys. I'm struggling to get through my sentences. I woke up especially early just to hammer out this episode. Plus 14 in turnover margin. That is top two or three in the FBS. That is really, really good. I'd say the odds of them getting a turnover in this game are reasonably high. I might bet the over on half a turnover, you know, or a turnover if I could find those yards. I wouldn't count on Alabama turning it over more than once. Um, but with a defense that clearly can can force and capitalize on, uh, you know, fumbles or uh, bad throws, I like Kansas State's odds. However, as good as 14, plus 14 turnover margin is, it is still really hard to pick the number 20 scoring defense over the number nine scoring defense, especially when you look at yards allowed per game and the competition that they've done it against. Again, I can hear Kansas State fans in the comments. Our strength of schedule was way tougher. Look, I'm not going to debate strength of schedule here. I, I hate getting into those what ifs. You know, if if this team played in that conference, then they'd be undefeated. Or if that team played in this conference, they'd have six losses. I hate that. There's no way to prove it. I'm not even going to get into it. All we can do is play the games on the schedule. And fortunately, we get to watch these two teams play this game on the schedule. But by the numbers here, this one goes to Alabama. Defensive advantage is going to Alabama. Chirp at me in the comments all you want. Um, just leave a, a, a thumbs up on the video and sub to the channel, and you can say whatever you want in the comments. Uh, wink, wink. All right, let's look at injuries, opt-outs, transfers, and we'll start with uh, the SEC team again for Alabama. So, Injuries, I have none listed. That doesn't mean there's none on the team, but that means for the bowl game, there's been no new injury. So if somebody was injured in like September and was declared out for the season back in September, they're probably not listed here. I check this with three or four different sources and I aggregate that. So I have no new injuries listed. I have no opt-outs listed, but I do have a slew of transfers. So I'm going to run through those really quick. Wide receiver Treshawn Holden, 25 catches for 331 yards. Wide receiver JoJo Earl, 12 catches, 151 yards. Pretty big. Those guys will find a home, uh, no doubt. Wide receiver Christian Leary, just one catch on the year. Running back Trey Sanders, believe he was the backup to Jameer Gibbs. Uh, 14 rushes for 80 yards, maybe not. Maybe he was three on the depth chart. Don't quote me on that. Um, guard JV on Cohen, offensive line, Tommy Brockermeyer, offensive line, Damian George, and defensive back Kyrie Jackson. I don't have snap counts listed for those guys, so it's possible they did not play any snaps this season. Um, well, except for Cohen, actually. Sorry, my bad. Uh, he's I think he's transferred to TCU. He was a starter. Um, so forgive me. And he was a very, very good starter. Um, and then uh I have a wide receiver, Holden, who played 308 snaps at the receiver position. Earl played 223 snaps. Um, but Brockermeyer, Damian George, Kyrie Jackson, I'm not sure about those guys. So Bryce Young, Will Anderson, Jameer Gibbs, all those superstars, they are in this game. Let's look at Kansas State. Um, so 
I want to talk about quarterback Adrian Martinez really quick. I know he was seen without a boot at that Big 12 championship, but he did not play in that game. I think that was a in case of emergency break glass type of situation. Uh, did not want to put him in a position just to put him in a position where he could possibly injure himself again. I think that was if all hell had broken loose. Um, he would have maybe been available. I'm not even sure if he was dressed out. Maybe I've got that wrong. Uh, it's early in the morning. I haven't had my coffee yet, and my memory's a bit fuzzy. Um, I do have wide receiver Malik Knowles. He got rolled up on in that Big 12 championship, uh, but I believe he is expected to play in this game. My expectation is that he will play. Also have cornerback uh, Ikao Boy Do. Hope I said that correctly. I try to pronounce names correctly. Apologies if I messed it up. He is expected to play. Don't have any opt outs listed. So, God, I love to see that, man. And that, that is one thing I love about this game. Whether you're an Alabama fan or you're a Kansas State fan, when you compare this game to other bowl games, big bowl games, to see that there are no opt outs in this game. Now, you know, we're looking at Tennessee Clemson in the Orange Bowl, maybe LSU Purdue Citrus Bowl. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure about the Cotton Bowl, but like it's just nice to see players playing these games even when they don't have national championship implications. So, um, We'll get to the M word here at the end. I'm going to bring up the M word because that's been tossed around a lot with this game. But people who doubted, you know, Nick Saban getting players to buy into a bowl game that doesn't have national championship implications, I think this speaks for itself. And I'll say the same for Kansas State. This is, it's, it's just great to see players wanting to play in these games. As a fan, you love it. I just think it makes it mean so much more. A couple transfers for Kansas State. Uh, linebacker, Crew Jackson. I think he was a little used backup. Cornerback, TJ Smith. He got over a little over 200 snaps as a, um, as a nickel defender. But he had one of the league's worst, uh, or, or one of the defense's worst pro football focus grades. I'm not big on pro football focus. I mean, I think it's, I, I get why it matters. I get why a lot of people look at it. I don't hang my hat on PFF grades because sometimes the way they grade stuff, I'm just like not sure what they're looking at. Anyway, there you have it. Let's talk key players. I'm starting to run a little bit longer on this video than I intended. Um, every time he touches the field for Alabama, he's going to be one of the stars. It's Bryce Young. He's got a quarterback rating of 83.6. He's thrown for over 3,000 yards. He's got 27 touchdowns and five interceptions. He's also added 45 rushes for 195 yards and four touchdowns. He's always a threat. Man, if you've never watched him play, you're really doing yourself a disservice. Just turn on some highlight film. The way he can just elude defenders and sneak out and just always manage to find somebody downfield, it never ceases to blow my mind. That guy is one of the best college football quarterbacks I've ever seen. The side note, it I cannot understand why anybody has him ranked behind Will Levis in the NFL draft. It makes zero sense to me. I will never, ever, ever, ever understand that. Okay. For Kansas State, love this guy. It is running back Deuce Vaughn. He is awesome. Human joystick cheat code mode. He's a top 12 rusher in the FBS. He's got 271 carries for over 1400 yards, eight touchdowns. He averages 5.3 a carry. He's also a threat to catch the ball. He's got 42 receptions for 378 yards and three touchdowns with an average depth of reception of nine yards. It's going to be awesome to watch him. Also, I'd look for maybe Adrian Martinez if he's available in this game to like come in in some kind of run packages. I don't know. I you know, I don't I don't like speculating on what we don't know. Um but I'm really interested to see what Kansas State does in their run game to complement what Deuce Vaughn does because they don't have the strongest passing attack. So if they become too one-dimensional, Alabama 
can just play in and and tighten it up in the box there and make it tougher. I want to see what other maybe slightly more exotic stuff they can do um, in their run game to help Deuce Vaughn out uh, to maybe kind of keep Alabama on their toes a little bit. Okay, let's take a look at the odds. ESPN favors, the, the FPI favors Alabama to win at a 73.1% chance versus Kansas State at a 26.9% chance. Okay. The spread favors Alabama. So Vegas also likes Alabama minus six and a half, as does the money line at minus 267. The over under at the time I'm recording this, and I'm going to double check right now, I have it listed at uh, 56. It looks like that has not changed. Um, with team totals for Alabama at 31 and Kansas State at 24. I honestly think that's pretty close. Um, I'll talk about that here in a, here in a second. Alabama is five and six and one against the spread. That's worse than expected. And Kansas State is nine and three and one. So if you're betting betting records against the spread. You might look at Kansas State and be like, you know, take Kansas State, you know, plus six and a half, take them to cover that with that nine and three and one record because Alabama has not been good against the spread. But as far as the over under, I think 56 is pretty close. I think 56 is pretty on the money. Um, So my final prediction... I, Chris Kleiman is a good coach, and I got that in the comments a lot. He's an underrated coach. I agree with you. I think he's a very, very good coach. He's taking Kansas State to two bowl games. One was a 2019 loss in the Liberty Bowl, and one was a 2021 win in the Texas Bowl. Nick Saban has coached 29 bowl games, 15 with Alabama, and including six national championships. Alabama simply lives in the postseason. So I'm going to come back to that M word, motivation. That word was tossed around a lot. Will Alabama be motivated to play in a Sugar Bowl that has no national championship implications? Well, they had no players opt out of this game. So you tell me, motivated? I don't think there's any question that Nick Saban has those guys motivated. So if Kansas State thinks there's a chance that they stroll into New Orleans and catch an unsuspecting Alabama team limping into this game, I'm here to tell you there is not. None. That is not going to happen. Are the Wildcats good enough to compete with the Crimson Tide? Yes, certainly. A lot of teams have competed with Alabama this year. But don't for a second get it twisted and think that Alabama isn't ready to compete with Kansas State. And that's kind of been the narrative. I think that's going to be put to bed really fast. I think a late touchdown by Kansas State makes the final score of this game appear closer than it really was. I'm taking Alabama 31, Kansas State 24. That's 55. So maybe I like the under just slightly. Um, the under that 56 point total, but I'm really not going to touch it. I'd rather take Alabama to win outright or take Alabama to cover. I think this game is really more 31 17 until a late touchdown by Kansas State. They don't quite cover, but it makes that game look a lot closer than it really was. There you have it, guys. That's my Sugar Bowl prediction. I'm taking the Crimson Tide for the win because I just will not bet against Nick Saban in the postseason. That's where he lives. That's his home. But I think Kansas State is an incredible team. They've had a great year. Congratulations on the Big 12 championship. I'm always hoping for just a great game. I love to see this one play tight. Love to see this one play close. I want to see Deuce Vaughn, Bryce Young, Jameer Gibbs, Will Howard. I want to see all those guys play really well guys that's gonna do it for this episode we've still got more football taking us into 2023 so even if i don't get to preview the bowl game that you're looking for i guarantee you i'll be recapping that action right here on the same channel i'll catch you on the next one guys right here on the sec recap podcast